So, you found your Yorkie, who was perfectly fine and healthy an hour ago, with a puddle of bright red bloody diarrhea. What does this mean? Is this serious? Your dog may be suffering from hemorrhagic gastroenteritis. Watch this video to find out exactly what HGE in dogs is, what the clinical signs, causes, diagnosis and treatment methods are, as well as what you can do to prevent this scary disease from occurring. Hey guys, Dr. Peter. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa. Now, acute hemorrhagic diarrhea syndrome, also previously known as hemorrhagic gastroenteritis or HGE, is a disorder of dogs characterized by sudden bloody vomiting and diarrhea. These are both big terms, but essentially what they mean is bloody inflammation of the stomach and the intestines. Now, most cases of HGE occur suddenly and without warning in dogs that have seemed to be otherwise healthy. The main and most disturbing clinical sign is the large amounts of explosive diarrhea that is very often bright red, resembling raspberry jam. Some dogs may also experience pain when pressed on their abdomens, a decrease in appetite, nausea, excessive drooling, lethargy, and sometimes even fever. Now, the truth is, we don't actually know what the exact cause of HGE in dogs is, which is why we refer to the cause being idiopathic. It is most probably related to dietary indiscretion, food allergies, immune-mediated diseases, or an overgrowth of certain types of bacteria, such as Clostridium perfringens type A, that is normally found in the dog's gut. This specific bacteria releases toxins that ulcerate the inside of the intestinal lining, which causes the intestinal blood vessels to become leaky, and thus will start to leak out fluid, electrolytes, protein, and even blood. Now, this breaks down the integrity of the intestinal wall and opens up the opportunity for bacteria to go into the dog's bloodstream, which can result in widespread sepsis or endotoxemic shock. Stress, anxiety, and hyperactivity are also thought to be triggering these bloody diarrhea episodes in susceptible breeds. Other possible causes of HGE may include stomach or intestinal ulcers, trauma, gastrointestinal tumors, foreign body obstructions, certain infectious diseases such as parvo, intestinal parasites, and coagulation, meaning blood clotting disorders such as seen when dogs ingest rat poison. Now, HGE can affect any breed, age, size, or gender of dog, but it is most commonly seen in small and toy breed dogs such as Yorkshire Terriers, Pekingeses, Dachshunds, and Boston Terriers. Now, because there are so many different things that could be causing HGE in dogs, getting a specific diagnosis can become quite challenging. The only real definitive way to get to a diagnosis is to take a biopsy of the intestines and sending it to the lab for analysis. This is quite invasive and expensive, and most vets will rather follow a diagnosis by means of exclusion approach where they will perform a couple of screening tests and then knock out the most common causes first. Your vet will start off by taking a full history and performing a proper physical exam. He may also opt to run a complete blood count or CBC, blood biochemistry, a urinalysis and blood clotting tests to check for abnormalities in organ function and blood cells, perform a fecal analysis to rule out parasites and take abdominal x-rays and ultrasound to look for any potential physical obstructions, tumors, or ulcers. One of the key findings in a diagnosis of HGE is the packed cell volume, or hematocrit, that is basically a measurement of the proportion of red blood cells in the blood. Now, because dogs with HGE becomes quickly dehydrated, this means that a lot of fluid is lost from the blood by means of the diarrhea and vomiting that the dog is experiencing. This causes the red blood cells to reflect as a higher percentage in relation to the rest of the blood constituents, which are things like the white blood cells, platelets, and plasma, and therefore the hematocrit of these dogs suffering from HGE 
will often be greater than 60% where the normal range for dogs is usually between 35 and 55%. This reading does not mean that they have more red blood cells. It just means the reading is falsely elevated due to the dog being dehydrated. Now, if the dehydration continues and the dog does not get the proper fluid therapy, the dog's red blood cell count will continue to increase, which will predispose the dog to developing a potentially fatal clotting disorder called disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC, which basically means that the blood will start to clot so rapidly that most, if not all, the clotting factors will be used up, therefore depleting the body's reserves and thus leading to the dog bleeding out as the remainder of the blood will then be unable to clot. Now dogs that develop HD can easily die from dehydration leading to marked hypoproteinemia, DIC, sepsis, and hypovolemic shock within 12 hours without the proper treatment. So if you notice any cherry red blood in their stools, it is important to take them to the vet as soon as possible. Your dog will need to be hospitalized and put on a drip to receive aggressive intravenous fluid therapy with electrolyte supplementation to help combat the dehydration. Food will mostly be withheld for the first 24 hours after which a bland diet such as boiled white chicken meat and white rice will be slowly introduced. Your vet will keep a close eye on your dog's glucose levels and if these drop too low, he may add dextrose supplementation to the dog's drip. Your dog will also need to receive intravenous antibiotics such as a combination of amoxicillin and metronidazole, gastrointestinal protectants such as sacrophate and acids such as ranitidine, and anti-nausea medication such as meropitin or metoclopramide. If the dehydration and blood loss is very severe, then plasma or colloids or even sometimes blood transfusions may be necessary to correct the severely low blood protein levels. If your vet detected any parasites in a dog's feces, then he will need to be dewormed as well. Now, once the bloody diarrhea and vomiting stopped and your dog is eating by himself again, he can be discharged from the hospital. Your vet may prescribe a course of medication that will need to be continued and completed at home, so make sure to follow his instructions carefully. The dog stool is expected to gradually return back to normal over the course of about one week, and it may turn from bright red to dark black back to light brown. Your vet will prescribe a specific diet for your dog, but generally dogs that suffer from HGE episodes do quite well on veterinary specific formulated diets such as Heels ID, Heels ID Mini Stress and Royal Canin Gastrointestinal. These diets contain highly digestible fiber, low fat, prebiotics, high levels of omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants which makes them easier to be digested and absorbed through the gut wall and thus indirectly calms and soothes the digestive tract while supporting a healthy immune system. If your vet suspects your dog to be suffering from a food allergy, he might recommend starting the dog on a prescribed diet containing a novel or hydrolyzed protein. Adding probiotics to the dog's food has also shown to be helpful in the long-term treatment and prevention of HGE. Now, since we do not really know what exactly causes this condition, it is difficult to give advice on prevention. However, reasonable suggestions would be to feed a high-quality commercial diet, refrain from giving your dog extra food treats or table scraps that your dog is not accustomed to, use parasite preventative medication as directed by your veterinarian, and to try and provide an as low stress environment as possible for your doggo. HGE is generally not considered to be contagious, except if the main cause is something like um, intestinal parasites. Now the prognosis is generally good if the dog was taken to the vet and if the appropriate treatment was started in time. The course of the disease is generally short, lasting from 24 to 72 hours and most patients recover with no long-term complications. Some dogs may just have a mild stomach upset that will result in one or two episodes of diarrhea and in these cases you could give it a day to see if the diarrhea will resolve. But 
If you notice any other clinical signs such as vomiting or inappetence or you notice any blood in their feces, then you should take your dog to the vet as soon as possible as this definitely indicates that there is a more serious underlying problem. Thank you for watching guys. If you found this video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like and share it with your friends and your family. And if your dog has bloody diarrhea and you are not yet convinced that it is HGE, then make sure to check out my playlist over here on the most common causes of bloody diarrhea in dogs so that you can try and figure out what might be going on with your doggo. And if you are new to my channel, then welcome and consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. And as always guys, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers.